Hi, it's Bethany from Smart Edition Academy. Today we are going to go through a Kaplan Nursing Science Practice Test. You can take this free practice test with me by using the link in the description. I will go through each question individually and explain the answer. After I read the question and the possible answers, I will pause and give you all some time to think about your answer, and then I will reveal the correct answer and explain why it is correct. Let's get started. So for this test, we have 20 questions and 30 minutes. The first question is, the term anatomical position refers to a person standing erect with the feet forward, arms hanging to the sides, and which of the following? Eyes looking down, eyes looking forward, palms facing forward, or palms facing the body. The correct answer here is palms facing forward. So anatomical position refers to the body's position or orientation. You may hear those terms used interchangeably when it is facing forward or looking at you. So if we look at this diagram, we can see that this body is facing forward or it's looking at us. The head is directed straight ahead. The feet are flat on the floor and facing forward and the arms are hanging at the sides with the palms facing forward. Understanding anatomical position is important as it creates a clear point of reference when you're discussing other directional terms. You may also hear anatomical position referred to as standard anatomical position. Which valve regulates blood flow between the right atrium and the right ventricle? Is it the aortic? the mitral, the pulmonary, or the tricuspid. The correct answer here is the tricuspid. So I'm going to show you a diagram of the heart. So the heart has four chambers, the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. Blood flow is regulated through the heart by the heart valves. Deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium and travels into the right ventricle by passing through this tricuspid valve right here. From there, the right ventricle will contract and push the blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery where the blood will travel to the lungs and become oxygenated. Oxygenated blood enters the left atrium by the pulmonary vein. Now remember, this is the one time when oxygenated blood travels through a vein and not an artery. So the oxygenated blood enters this left atrium through the pulmonary artery and it travels into the left ventricle by way of the mitral valve. From the left ventricle, the left ventricle contracts and pushes blood through the aortic valve into the aorta, which is this big vessel right here. A mnemonic to help you remember the order of the heart valves is try pulling my aorta. The T in try stands for tricuspid valve. The P in pull stands for pulmonary, the M in my for mitral valve, and the aorta for the aortic valve. Exchanges of substances like gases and nutrients occur at the arteries, capillaries, veins, or venules. The correct answer here is the capillaries. So oxygenated blood travels through the arteries and the arterioles, which are small branches of arteries, and then to the capillaries that surround tissues. The capillaries then deliver oxygen, which is a gas, and nutrients to organs and tissues. It then removes the cellular reaction byproducts 
from the oxygen exchange, which is carbon dioxide, also a gas, and water. After blood leaves the aorta, it travels to the arteries, arterioles, capillaries, or venules. So remember how we discussed blood travel through the heart in question two? So if we go back to this diagram, you'll remember that blood enters the aorta when the left ventricle contracts and pushes that blood through the aortic valve into the aorta. It's a big vessel here. And then the aorta has branches where that branch off into different arteries throughout your body. And so through the aorta, the blood travels from the aorta to the arteries. And so the correct answer is arteries. Which two hormones promote sperm cell production in males? Is it growth and thyroid stimulating, follicle stimulating and prolactin, luteinizing and follicle stimulating, or thyroid stimulating and luteinizing? So the correct answer is luteinizing and follicle stimulating. So these two hormones are secreted by the anterior pituitary gland. And the luteinizing and follicle stimulating hormones not only have to do with sperm cell production in males, but in females, these hormones promote ovulation and follicle maturation. The lining of the stomach is covered with rugae. What is the benefit of this? Does it increase the output of gastric juices, increase the surface area of the stomach, increase the permeability of the stomach walls, or increase the type of nutrients that can diffuse? So the correct answer here is that rugae increases the surface area of the stomach. So rugae are folds of the stomach lining or the stomach mucosa, and these folds will stretch out or expand or provide elasticity, allowing the stomach to expand, such as like when you eat a meal, and this increases the surface area or the volume of the stomach. Killer T cells and B cells are stimulated to act by a protein that blank release. Is it B cells, helper T cells, macrophages, or natural killer cells? So the correct answer here is helper T cells. So when a foreign body or a pathogen enters the body, for example, a virus, the body starts to fight, and the B cells and the T cells work together in this fight. These cells are activated by the helper T cells. Once activated, killer T cells will attack and kill the infected cells while the B cells mark or label that pathogen or foreign body for a later destruction by the macrophage. What is usually the first line of defense in the human body when a pathogen invades? Is it B cells, macrophages, mucus covering, or T cells? So the correct answer here is mucus covering. You may also hear this referred to as mucus membranes. So mucus membranes are the moist lining of some body cavities or organs. Think the nose, the mouth, the lungs. Mucous membranes secrete mucus, hence their name, and may also have small hair-like cilia. So when a pathogen enters the body, it will ideally become trapped within that mucus, while the cilia will sweep that mucus containing the pathogen towards body openings and hopefully excreting it from the body. A 
characteristic of all muscles is that they recoil after stretching or are known to be elastic, relaxing, excitable, or contractile. So the correct answer here is elastic. So after being stretched, the muscle will return to its original length. So let's use a rubber band for an analogy to think about this. So if you have that rubber band and you stretch it out, when you release that rubber band, it's going to return to the same size that it was before you stretched it. Nodes of Ranvier are the spaces between myelin sheaths, cavities in the brain filled with fluid, dendrites that receive sensory inputs, or chemical messages carried in vesicles. The correct answer here is spaces between the myelin sheaths. So the myelin sheath is a protein and a lipid structure that insulates the neuron axons. So if you can see here in this diagram, the axon is this um, line right here, and these little bubble looking things are the myelin sheath. So think of it as a blanket. So the myelin sheath kind of wraps around that axon. So between each of the myelin sheaths is a really small gap known as your nodes of Ranvier. So you can see it right here, and then it would be again here, 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 and so on. So this is a really small area where that axon is uncovered, and the function of the nodes of the Ranvier are to generate a fast electrical impulse along that axon. An axon binds to a blank to release hormones in the body. Is it a gland? a dendrite, a cell body, or a muscle cell. So the correct answer here is a gland. So axons attach to cell bodies and conduct and transmit information to other cells. When an axon transmits information to a gland, a hormone is released from that gland. So an example of this would be an axon from the hypothalamus telling the pituitary gland to release a hormone. While hiking, a person is startled after they encounter a bear. Their palms get sweaty, heart starts racing. What part of her nervous system is directly stimulated when they see that bear? Is it the central, the parasympathetic, the somatic, or the sympathetic? So the answer here is the sympathetic. So the sympathetic nervous system, which you may also hear called the fight or flight response, occurs in response to something like an emergency, a life-threatening situation, something scary, or something stressful. So this response is an unconscious and it's non-voluntary. One way to remember this is to think of the word stress and the S in stress equals the S in sympathetic. When do vesicles contract and move to the presynaptic membrane? After calcium ions flood the axon bulb, exactly as an axon connects to dendrite, before voltage-graded sodium channels open, or while an electric signal travels down an axon. So the correct answer here is after calcium ions flood the axon bulb. So calcium ions move into the axon terminal bulb at the presynaptic neuron. The calcium ions bind with proteins on the synaptic vesicles causing the vesicles to contract and move to the presynaptic membrane. What best describes homeostasis? Is it a functional system of the body, 
blood flow to every cell in the body, a relatively consistent environment within the body, or neural, neural pathways that have integrated into the body. So the correct answer here is a relatively consistent environment within the body. So when you think of homeostasis, think of steady or the same or constant. So homeostasis is the body maintaining a condition of optimal functioning, and it involves all of the organ systems of the body working together. Examples of homeostasis include thermoregulation or body temperature regulation and the regulation of your blood glucose levels. When menopause occurs, is it earlier in males than in females, in females at an average age of 51, just after the end of embryogenesis, or during the second week of each menstrual cycle? So menopause occurs in females at an average age of 51. So menopause marks the end of the menstrual cycle and it is classified as 12 months without a period or a menstrual cycle. So this process generally occurs between the ages of mid 40s to mid 50s with 51 being an average age in the United States. Oxygen rich blood is blood that has a very low pH level, flows into systemic circulation, leaves from the right side of the heart, or contains high concentration of carbon dioxide. So the correct answer here is that oxygen-rich blood is blood that flows into systemic circulation. So if you will recall from questions two and four, You'll remember that oxygenated or oxygen-rich blood flows from the left side of the heart to the aorta. Then from this aorta, the oxygen-rich blood flows to all the body systems or into systemic circulation. What process begins with red blood cells giving up oxygen to other cells in the body? Is it air conduction, cellular respiration, internal respiration, or pulmonary ventilation? So the correct answer here is internal respiration. So internal respiration is an exchange of gases. So I'll show you a little diagram here. So right here is our internal respiration. So with internal respiration, oxygen is distributed into the blood and from the blood it goes into the cells and tissues via the capillaries. And then carbon dioxide is that waste product, if you remember, of this exchange. It returns into the blood and is removed via the capillaries. So this is your internal respiration cycle. After the trachea, the first branch that leads towards the lungs is the alveolus, the bronchi, the larynx, or the pharynx. So the correct answer here is the bronchi. So if you think of the, um, the airway system as kind of like a tree, an upside down tree, your trachea is the trunk, your bronchi, which branch off to the right and the left side, so you have a right and a left bronchi, they go to each lung, are your bigger branches. From the bronchi, you have bronchioles, which are these smaller branches and it's shown here enlarged and then the alveoli which are tiny air sacs that are at the end of the bronchioles so think of those like the leaves so the trachea is your trunk the bronchi on both sides are your big branches the bronchiole your smaller branches and the alveoli at the end of the bronchiole 
are your leaves. And that's an easy way to kind of remember the, that airway flow. What is the characteristic of compact bone? Is it a site of hematopoiesis? Is it made of dense connective tissue? Does it contain osteocyte bone cells or does it consist of several openings or pores? So the correct answer here is that it's made of dense connective tissue. So if we look here at this diagram of a bone, you can see that the compact bone is right here. It's considered the outer shell or outer layer of the bone and it provides strength and protection to the softer layers of the bone such as your spongy bone. After urine flows through one sphincter at the start of the bladder, this, flow, this fluid flows through the urethra naturally because of gravity. The urethra after the two sphincters con contract the second sphincter under voluntary control, or collecting ducts at the base of the renal tubule. So the correct answer here is the second sphincter under voluntary control. So there are two sphincters in the urinary system, one at the beginning of the bladder and one at the end of the bladder. The voluntary control sphincter at the end of the bladder is what pushes urine to the urethra where it is then excreted. Great job for following along. I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to check out the link in the description below for the entire free Kaplan entrance practice test and additional study resources such as the Kaplan study group and the Kaplan online course. Good luck with all your studying. I know you'll do great.